Welcome back to Tiger Hanger. This is Mike. Today I want to talk to you about the Jada Toys M. Bison and Dalzim figures. They are pretty cool. I'm so excited to finally get new characters that are not just revamps of other characters or picking up where playmates left off, but getting actual new characters. And now this is the beginning of getting a whole bunch of new ones like Guile and them. So I'm really looking forward to all these. But these are really solid showings. I did get this at Gundam it, which is Shozy store, kind of a an alternate store for more for action figures than for robots, and so that's why it's Gundam it. But I will have a link down below where you can get yours, and it comes from Gundam it, and they still give you transformer stickers. Weird. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna get in and take a look at this. I'll have a link down below where you can get yours, and of course, TH reviewer code. But let's take a look at M Bison and Dalzim coming up. All right, so here they are in the packaging. I think the packaging does look pretty cool. This is the same stuff they've been doing overall, but you can kind of see all the stuff that they have in there. And wow, he's got some long legs, long arms going on in there, and the cape. So much cool stuff. Can't wait to get it out. And yeah, looking good in the packaging. All right, so here they are out of the package. Not only do they look really cool, but they come with quite a few accessories. And this is really pretty impressive. This does look really good. The way they have this all set up, and I like it. I think that uh, you get the value for your money, and I think that the playability in these and the options that you have are great. But we're gonna we're gonna do one at a time. So I'm gonna get in talk about Dalzim first. So he's a really cool looking figure overall. I do like the head sculpt, and I actually kind of like the other head better. We're gonna get into accessories and stuff, but straight out the box, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. He's got a necklace. He's got these earrings that independently dangle which is really cool. You don't have to put that on yourself, so that's cool. It's a three skeleton necklace. And then he's got quite a bit. We'll get into articulation a bit, but all the articulation, that's really cool. His shorts, and he's got uh, these wrist bracelets that are going on. It's kind of cool stuff. He just he looks the character. He fits the character. And if this is all you got, it would be okay. But the fact that you get all of that, all of this other stuff, makes it really awesome. But... Yeah, he looks good, and he fits the bill. He comes out of the box with kind of like a chopping hand, like when his hand's going to go. But we're going to get into accessories, but let's go ahead and do articulation. Then we do accessories, then we have some fun. Head's about on a ball joint here, and he's got that and the neck's on a joint too. That's cool, so you can get a lot out of that. And then shoulder, it's really tight going past the 90, and it's got an, an elbow, or an elbow, butterflies, front and back butterflies, bicep swivel, and then double jointed elbows, and the hands, I think they give a little back and forth on the hands, and all around, so they've done quite a bit with the hands, you've got the waist, like you've got, you got the, I don't know if you call this, it's not an ab crunch, because he does have an ab crunch, but it's got kind of like a mid torso swivel, it's just a bit, it's not a lot. And legs go up to here, up to here, and thigh swivel. Now this is really ingenious. The thigh swivel's on the, the pop-out joint, which is cool, double jointed knees, and then feet that do pretty much everything you need. Up, back, they're pretty strong too, so I like that. They kind of swivel a little bit. They don't go back and forth, they swivel a little bit. Still, great stuff. I mean, obviously he's gonna stand, and that's awesome. For accessories, I think I'm going to swap his head, and I and that's what I'm going to keep on him in my display, because I just like that. That's just awesome. That is just crazy. Remember when I played the character? This wasn't my favorite character because I didn't like the gameplay so much, but after you kind of got, got it down, it's one of those things where you could actually almost beat everybody with. Now, what else does he have? Hands, so let's swap these hands out and not lose the bracelet. So here's one crazy hand. There's a crazy hand. Just, ah, and then the other hand, because this is more like a karate chop hand, and this is more like a grabbing hand slash going crazy hand. That's kind of cool, too. Now, where it starts getting really crazy is when you get into these arms. So, as you can see, we have this kind of hand, this kind of hand, and you have the arms that have, I guess, is it permanently attached? I think it's permanently attached, yeah. Because it's kind of rubbery. It's permanently attached. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They got the bendums in the arms. 
the venom's in the arms. So you got fist too, but you have to swap the whole arm out. So let's do that. And it is kind of rubbery, so you're going to need to twist it around to get it in there. And then he's like, wow. That was one of his signature moves where he did that. But it's kind of, I always remember everything going in doubles for some reason. Like both arms went at the same time. And that's how I remember the character. Gosh, I haven't played this in a long time. I'm going to have to break out some old systems and get going on playing some Street Fighter again because. But I remember it being like two hands going at the same time. And then he'll do some number like this. And then both his hands go at the same time. So yeah, cool stuff with the hands. Let's see if he does that with the legs. Now the legs are a little bit different. They pop off at the thigh. And so we can do that. And you wouldn't, you could do like one standard leg and then one long leg, or you could do both long legs if you wanted to. And he's got some crazy nonsense going on like this. So, plus you could just make him a really tall guy, which I don't know. I don't know if he's going to hold with the bendums. Now it does have bendiness to it. And I say bendums, that's kind of what we talk about when it's bendums. But here he is, he's a tall guy. He's not really standing on his own. These aren't meant for standing. They're meant for like posing to do some crazy kicks or something. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And here he is trying to kick M. Bison. So getting into M. Bison, here's M. Bison, and he's crazy, evil dude. This is, uh, from what I remember, when my Street Fighter 2 that I played, he was the man. He was the top dog character that you have to fight to win the game. And first time I played him, he was just insanely hard. Just insanely hard. But I thought he, still think he's a pretty cool character, a pretty cool figure. And of course, he was in the movie, and it, yeah. Pretty good stuff here. Anyway, there he is. Let's try to get him standing now. After I had him in a crazy pose, and got to get everything straightened out, get him standing up again. He feels a little bit on the back heavy this of him, but still pretty cool. So he got packed with fists, and he's gonna have one other set of kind of open hands too. But looking at him overall, he does look good. I like the paint apps on his hat. His hat looks really good. All the paint on there. He's got a wired cape, which is really awesome that they went through that trouble in cloth and wired cape. You can change out his shoulder pads. Uh, here his, he's got his wrist sort of gauntlets, if you, if you want to call that. He's got this belt buckle painted silver blue stripe down there. That's cool. This is rubbery right here. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that's going to impede any of the articulation but still it looks really good overall but let's go ahead and get into his articulation which is pretty much the same but a little bit to be impeded and then we'll get into accessories and have some more fun again he's got the same pretty much the same as dalzim his head goes all around and it holds really well too so that's pretty cool and then a little bit with that neck but this piece gets in the way and then he goes just barely to the 90 and he could do 360. The, the cape moves with it a bit. But yeah, okay, he can't do 360 because that, that whole mechanism is going to stop it. So he has a cape. Um, double jointed double jointed elbows, but they don't go as far as some of the other ones. He's got side to side with that and his ab crunch. And then that popped off, which is fine because you, you pop it on and it'll probably stay for a while. Now, it goes out to there so you can get a good kick. And I'm not sure if he can stay on his own with that kick. And then thigh swivel, which is sort of hidden by this thing there, which is kind of cool too. And then double jointed knee, which looks great. And then side to side and up and down on that foot. And he is, for whatever reason, a little bit on the back heavy side of things. That's the reason I'm popping the alternate head on. I'm probably going to leave the alternate head on. Just I like him looking mean as heck because he is mean and heck. And he's a bad guy. I mean, that's just the way that I think the movie portrayed him. I can't remember. I, I didn't watch the whole movie, or it's been a long time since I watched it, so I don't remember how it was all portrayed. Uh, popping this off, I'm sure there's a correct, right way to do it, but I'm just kind of fiddling with it till it pops off. There it goes. That didn't sound good. Then you can pop these other ones on, so make sure you have the right one on the right side. I think it even tells you, but... Whichever one feels like it'll fit right. Not that it doesn't feel like it fits right. Pop him on, and then you can have him without his cape. So that's the whole idea behind that. 
but I will definitely keep his cape on him. Still, that's what he looks like without his cape. Then he comes with two more hands, but before that, let's go ahead and put his fist in this so we could probably, probably want to leave a fist on. I'm not sure if that's going to fit on a standard hand. Let's put a stand, like a grabby hand. It's not standard. They don't hold anything, so they don't have any weapons. Uh, let's see if that'll fit in here also. And actually, that fits in there very well. Yeah, that, that fits in real well. So there's all of accessories. So he doesn't have nearly as much as Dalsim, but he has some cool stuff. Cool stuff coming along. Wait, hold on a second. There we go. Cool stuff so that you can see him punching. Obviously, this is meant for this fist as a punching fist. That looks good. All right, so doing some comparisons. I think this is Storm Collectibles, but I'm not 100% sure. I got it used. I don't. I didn't really look to see what it was, but they had a whole lot of Storm Collectibles stuff, and this was loose, and I thought, it, I thought I'm pretty sure it was Storm Collectibles. But anyhow, he's more of a 7-inch scale, or a little bit bigger than these guys. And then down here, this is what Playmates did for Chun-Li, and I, I thought they did a pretty good job with her. Here's a comparison to Ryu, and... The thing is that this one here is the Playmates, this one here is the Jada Toys, and you can just decide which one you like more. I like both of them for different reasons, but I I would say probably would want to stick with having it all the same, all of them being your Jada Toys, but I'm going to have a mix of them just because that's how I rock, that's how I roll. And really for comparison here, how do they fit in? This is 7-inch, of course, so Skeletor with the Super 7 in the 7-inch scale, which was also the same exact mold, pretty much the same exact figure as the Maddie Collector with the Club Grayskull. Here we go over here with a Captain Tarkin from Star Wars Black Series in more of a standard size human. If I put Darth Vader over here, he'd be bigger than him because he's supposed to be bigger. But anyway, there you go for comparisons. All right, so what do I think about these figures? I think that they're both great, and they did a great job with them. It's really cool how they added some extra features to bring Dalsim to life and to do what he did in the game. And I have to say that I would have liked M. Bison to have maybe had a little bit more in the accessory department, but I still don't really care about accessories so much. I really just want these figures on the shelf looking cool, and I think they included enough to make it worthwhile. My big downside for him is that his uh, shoulder pieces for the cape pop up off occasionally, and then when you want to take them off, it seems like they don't want to come off. So it's really weird with that. And Dalzim just, he was not my favorite character in the game. I wasn't really excited to play him in the game, but to get him in action figure form, I like him. But I would say I like M. Bison the most because that's just me and my preference of characters. But I'm sure, what do you think? Do you guys like M. Bison? Do you like uh, Dalzim? Do you like them both? Are you just excited to see them getting brought to life? And just like me, are you excited for more of these coming out to get this at Gundamit, which is like Shozi, and it is Shozi. It is just a sister site or their other site. And I'm going to have a link down below where you can get yours. Remember, TH reviewer code. Help the channel out. Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe. Tell your hair out.